Hey guys, Eric Niel again. Um, I'm still actually uh, editing a video on the laptop for uh, the, I was playing around with scopes on, probably like it was raining starters, literally like five or six of them, uh, seven of them, in you know the past week, and I was doing some images on. Pretty cool. I mean, it's uh, you know, you know it, it took me down a different route, and I thought it was going to take me down, but anyways. One of the reasons I got a new scope was for uh, having the four channels, being able to do a couple other things whenever I do need them. So, may as well take some practice. Aaron's car wouldn't start this morning. So, uh, before I even brought in, I looked at a waveform of a charging test I did on it, uh, probably six months at the most, five, six months, somewhere in the summer. But uh, the battery only dipped down to 10 and a half volts whenever it cranked. So, I mean, that's that's a sign of a pretty healthy battery. Charging system was pretty good. You know, I looked with all the loads on. Uh, the alternator was starting to get a little bit weak air. It wasn't quite keeping up. It was like uh, 13.1 with, with everything on, you know. But, you know, with everything off, it was like 14.2, something in there. I mean, I, I'll, I'll dig out the waveform again, but I mean, it's pretty good whenever you could look back. And then whenever I took off the – it's in the trunk on that. This is a 2007 Dodge Charger, by the way. Uh, it's in the trunk, so – uh, I took it out and I, yeah, it was stone dead. I, I don't know what happened to it, but the, there was a very loose ground wire on both ends. It's a short wire. Both ends were loose. Yeah, you know, I took it off, cleaned it up, put it back on. Thing starts right up, runs good. I mean, you know, so I figured why well, I got it in here. It's like, uh, take, take a good chance here. I was just using the scope for the first time. I use it on a starter because that's a pretty simple, well, you know, it's more complex than you think, but there, there's actually a, a, you know, pretty simple way to use your oscilloscope on it and a good way to use a new scope on. But what I wanted to start using for is the first one on the ignition and maybe check out the presets. You know, they, they have a couple automotive presets on there, and I know uh, primary, secondary, and uh, primary uh, current were on there. So maybe try to get three channel on it. It's a very easy coil to get to. Uh, let me flip this around to show you. Okay, I have a snap on. It's a coilover plug uh, ignition pickup. It's uh, the number on it's the COP11. And I, I have into the different color wire. There's a brown and white on all three of the coils that I can see on this side. And this is an easy one to get to for one coil. That's why I wanted to give this one a shot. Because all three things I could get right there, but the different color wire, there's a blue and white, a blue and yellow, and a blue and green. The, the, the one that changes color is the one I have that uh, back probe in. And then I have just an AES wave. It's a low amp clamp. I have it going around. It shouldn't matter which wire, but it shouldn't matter which direction we have it on. I'm not sure which wire, which way it should go. We could invert it, but you know, you're better off getting it right from the source. But, you know, hey, no problem inverting. Sometimes you have to. But I just have the wires coming back, and then I'm going to plug this in, and uh, it's going to take, it, you know, probably five minutes to calibrate from being out in the cold again. And I'm going to get into the presets on it, and there is a primary, a secondary, and a current for the ignition. So we're going to see what it sets it up for just by going to that. Okay, guys, I just wanted to share this before the... Oh, that beep was whenever I left the software. Like I'm saying, that's one of the things that you got to use the screen recorder to uh, work around. But uh, I was just playing around. I have it on uh, primary ignition voltage, the primary ignition, the current ramp, and the secondary ignition. And I was just seeing how much time I could put on the screen, like here, if I stop this even with the zoom function you could zoom into uh, like if you were just looking we'll say it for this dip right up here right here you wanted to zoom in on that so we'll say it's it, it's this one right here you think for some reason he's a troublemaker you could always zoom in more until you see each each individual and all, all these ignition events. And again, that's a uh, primary ignition, the yellow, 
the blue's the primary ignition current ramp, and then the purple's the secondary ignition. But this is a spark line only snap on thing, so we don't see the spike. That'll be pretty good for uh, lower uh, scopes that couldn't take the initial spike. If you were just looking for the burn line, because you could see on this, on the secondary, there's no top to the burn line, or to the firing line. The spark line is what we're looking for here, the burning line. But right here, where, wherever it, uh, the coil collapsed, that, that's we don't see here. Usually you will with a secondary ignition probe, a paddle probe, but it says on this probe, the snap-on probe, it says uh, burn line only. So we're still seeing the burn line here on the primary pretty good. Seeing the secondary pretty good, and I mean, you could zoom in, then you could follow along to wherever you see up here. If, you, if you're looking for, you know, anything happening out of the ordinary, you see something way over here in the corner, still the same thing. You know, that's pretty decent. Pretty happy with that. Uh, I mean, the way it looks. I switched over. You could switch over all your measurements. Uh, Ah, that's with the attenuator on the 40. Get back up, that looks pretty good there. But I mean, you can, it's pretty good. If you change your time to longer. And I was just seeing what, what the furthest we could push any kind of detail. Well, not the furthest, but just, I mean, if, it, if this is, like I'll, I'll get a ref in here and ju just see what, you know, what kind of time that leaves on the screen. Awesome. That's plenty of time to come out and stop it. And then from here, you could even, without even going to the zoom, so you could easily identify the snaps. without using the zoom function at all. But if you're looking at that longer waveform, I mean, sometimes it's easier to scroll by. Like here, I mean, actually, look, we, we don't see a primary spike. That was just from scrolling down. But what we see is something firing. Okay, we don't see a spike, a KV spike here. Let's see if the secondary looks any different just from this far back. No KV spike here. And on the secondary, look how the burn line goes straight down. But we're still having a burn line here. If we go to the last event, still aiming down some, but look at the look at that spark burn compared to that right there. Right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a misfire. Well, now where I am, right on, uh, and this is going straight down. 
so what can we tell about that? The lean uptick, possibly rich, would we lean away from fuel injector being just the sperm lines going down and it's not going up? There's no spike here, so that would be like two quick pieces of evidence that, you know, we don't have a lean uptick to the primary, and we don't have a lean uptick to the secondary. So this is what the zoom, if you don't want to do this, that's what the zoom will help you out doing. But here we see the lean uptick at the end. And even on the secondary, we're burning straight across. So just some two things in general. And plus we still see right here, we, we do see the KV spike. So just based on them two things, I'd lead away from fuel injector and start going right after you know that coil if this was a persistent problem I mean I drove the car yesterday I wasn't aware it had a misfire but it's a dodge sometimes it just takes one for the team looks like another misfire right after it you know it makes you wonder where you're at in the waveform too could be getting ahead of myself I could be right in the middle of the dead or a diesel where am I on the waveform yes I am I'm in some of that here. So, so really, I mean, if we were at idle and we were seeing sparks like that, still you don't like seeing the missing KV and uh, straight rich. Seems like the coil or the plug's not catching up somewhere. It doesn't seem like the ignition's catching up with the fuel would be my, you know, first general guess on, on the rev. That's pretty neat. That's a lot, a lot of information on one shot. And uh, why well, I do have it hooked up. Okay, the sample rate was on. Uh, I thought it was still on auto. But that's three channels. That's why I have 10 million uh, mega points of deep memory. And it, it would even go further, I'm sure. But you see just this little bit. That's how much you can fill the screen up with. Now, if you're going to get that kind of resolution, that, that's a matter for another day. But I I know I like that little bit right there. And this would be the zoom. Like, if you were looking at this, that's a prime example for the zoom function. If you knew you were on a rev and you wanted to zoom in to where you're on a rev. And so you could see the, the current, the blue, you could see the secondary, I mean, you could see a lot just looking a little waveform, but you could use the zoom function and just move up here. See, so would have known from up here, we were going into it, right? See, it's fine, real healthy air. I see a couple breaking up in there. That might be on a D cell too, that rich. A rich uptick when we're not seeing the lean uptick. That might be a D cell we're catching there. That would be, you know, if this was getting misfire coated or I had any inkling it was missing at idle, that's where I'd be digging in, but. Now I like what I see with this scope for ignition. This is, uh, it still seems like it got a lot more left. Like I could put the fourth channel on there, pulse sensor, anything like that. And that'd be in, uh, you know, more than have the power to get at least this far. And I, I like that. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. I figured just give you a real quick uh, look at it, see what I get to play with. So it's enjoyable. All right, guys, have a good one. Adios.
I hope you enjoyed that little bit. It's, uh, it's pretty cool finally getting to see it on the ignition. Now it's playing around like the starters I was telling you, but uh, hopefully I'll get that video out and you can take a look at that. Uh, it's pretty cool. I was using h -Cope and uh, this new mix they got, the, the Vado series. It's a Vado 2004. Pretty decent scope so far. I like it. I'm going to be using a lot in the future. I mean, that, third, that uh, fourth channel, it's still open. I mean, that would have been great for an intake pulse sensor, uh, exhaust pulse sensor, anything like that. And I'm going to be using it with the transducer, everything. I, I like what I'm seeing. Still fumbling around, getting used to it. But, all right, good job, Mixic. You're going to be my four channel go to. Oh, yeah. And it fits in the Milwaukee toolback quite nice. Good to go.